AJ, can I just go back to the string of uh, emotion that sure. you're talking about? Um, I know there's been a couple of times I've got into my causal emotion and I feel like I'm only crying for like, you know, maybe 15 minutes, but then I feel empty. And I know it depends on whether our law of attraction changes or not, but I'm just wondering, can you get to a point when you're in your causal where you feel empty, mm -hmm. but there is still more there on another layer? Certainly. Of, okay. Yes, yeah, certainly. Then, and that happens quite frequently because the reason why is that often we have a blockage at that point, so we have a fear kick in at that point that prevents the rest of the emotion coming up and the next natural thing we'll need to do is deal with that fear. Does that make sense? So, and we're not often conscious of what the fear is, even intellectually, and so we're going to have to now work through what the fear is from an emotional perspective, which means discovering it through your law of attraction. And so, so well, oftentimes you'll feel the emotion for 15 minutes, all of a sudden it'll feel like it's all dried up, and then you, you might go off doing something else and then realise, oh, there's still more there, but it'll come up late, later. What we often do, myself and Mary, is if Mary or myself has cried for 15 minutes um, and then it's stopped, we'll often discuss what the block must be, we're like what the fear is. Um, and that helps a lot. Sometimes after you've discussed what the fear is, you can get straight back into the emotion again because you've released the fear. Does that make sense? It just depends on how you deal with it. Many people don't deal with it that way. They cry for 15 minutes and say, oh, you beauty, it's all over now. Gee, that was great, right? And then a week later they go to the same emotion because, and then they say, oh, this stuff doesn't work. But the reality is that every emotion often will work for a short period of time until we hit a fear or a blockage and we've got to deal with that fear or blockage before the next group of emotion, the next part of that emotion can be experienced. When you think of a lot of childhood events, a lot of childhood events didn't happen all at once. They happened over a period of time, and often that period of time was like, like for example, mum said something to you, you started to feel sad. When you started to feel sad, mum said another thing to you, don't you be sad, you know, or... I'll give you something to cry about. Then that made you feel scared. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And then you shut down. So can you see how every event got created through a series of events usually? It's not just like one bang event that just happened all at once, but it's often a series of different events that caused the suppression of an emotion. And often when the release of the emotion, a series of unlocking events will also need to occur in order to get it, that emotion released. So... Is the level of our releasing um, equivalent to the level of our allowing ourselves to fear or the desire to let go? Or Because I know I've heard some people say, I've been working on this issue for six months. Does it have to take six months because that's how much grief's in there? Or is it dependent upon our allowing it? It's very dependent on our humility. And remember, humility is the desire the passionate desire to feel and experience every one of my emotions. So if we define humility like that, our release of any emotion at any one time is very dependent on humility. Most of us are still developing humility, which means we're coming from a place where we're not very humble. In other words, we have no desire to feel our emotions. We want to do you know, everything but feel our emotions. And then we're stepping slowly into a place where we want to feel every emotion. So, so at any one point in time, you could say that we're progressing in humility, which also then means we're progressing in the process of allowing. So, so when we begin, our allowance won't be very strong at all and our desire won't be very strong at all, a, a real heart desire, I mean. And we have lots of blockages. And so we might cry for five minutes and then it's all dried up and you know, three weeks later we cry for five minutes again and then it's all dried up. And then after a while it's, uh, oh, we cry for 10 minutes now and it's every week, you know. And then after a while it's, oh, we cry for 15 minutes now and every day. Do you know what I mean? Because what's happening is we're slowly stepping into this process of being truly humble. And in the process of doing that, we have more allowance and more desire to actually feel everything we feel in the moment. And so you, you can't expect yourself to go from blocked to completely open and humble emotionally in the space of one sitting. So it all speeds up though. Yes, it all speeds up. And then what happens is it speeds up until we get to, usually there's some crux or, or crucial issues in our life emotionally. And the crucial issues in our life emotionally, there's usually five to ten of those really crucial issues that we have the most resistance to. 
And that's the time that we need to be diligent in actually working our way through our fears rather than stepping into anger all the time. Because we can actually stay in anger all the time with those crucial issues. So the key is to allow the emotional process, the opening, the opening of humility to continue to occur until you get to the stage where these crucial issues come up and you'll feel them because they're the ones you have the most anger with. Does that make sense? Every crucial issue is the one I have the most anger with. So what I do then is I know I'm in a lot of fear here. The, the anger is proportional to the fear you're in. So the more anger I feel, the more fear I'm in. So my anger and fear are very much related. So I allow myself to see the fear I'm in and understand, wow, this is a crucial issue. I'm in a lot of anger here, so this is a big issue for me. And I need to allow myself to even start discovering this issue, becoming aware, noting down, writing, be diligent in facing this particular issue. And when you face those particular issues, you first will have a lot of fear to deal with and then a lot of grief. And those, the grief of those issues may take a day, two days, even a couple of weeks to deal with every day. Those crucial issues are often core to change. And when you go through them, that's when you'll actually feel huge law of attraction change. So up until that point, you often feel gradual law of attraction change. Till you get to a crucial issue, you get stuck a little bit on that crucial issue usually because we have huge amounts of fear and blockages to it. We've got to release the blockages and fears to that crucial issue and that might take a week, a month, it might even a few months, might even six months, right? And then and the little bits of dribble of emotion coming out then. And then all of a sudden we release the last blockage to that crucial issue and all of a sudden it will just come out of us like a dam bust over a period of a week or a few weeks. And after that, your law of attraction will change quite markedly. And that's what's basically happened to me with all of my processing, that kind of process. And you can't be humble to everything when you've got so much fear because fear is the blockage to humility as well. So it's a matter of working through your fears and letting those things occur.